Greetings. I'd like to talk a little bit today about being serious for our Savior. It goes without saying that if you want someone to take you seriously, you need to be serious, or you should be, because if you keep interjecting it with humor, they might wonder how serious you are, or it just might not sink into them. And so I think as Christians, we need to be careful how we're presenting the gospel. Only too often I am seeing pastors or, or teachers trying to entertain people. Uh, it is normal to have humor interjected here and there. Don't get me wrong. If you're sharing stories, stories that maybe one time were serious and now you look back and it makes you laugh, that's normal. But sometimes this kind of degrades into what is almost just a stand-up comedy routine. And then, who is going to be affected? And if they are affected, will it be lasting? So I think we need to be very careful about that. I remember when I was a freshman in college, during my first semester, uh, my father passed away. It was shortly after Thanksgiving holiday. I'd been there in school for a few days, and he passed away. And people were wishing me, you know, they were expressing sympathies, wishing me well during the day. And, but at the end of the day, I managed to have supper in the cafeteria with, with a, a more longtime friend. And she began to, let's say, distract me, just thinking about some lighter times, making me laugh. There was nothing humorous about my father's death. That was never mentioned. It was just a diversion. But another friend came up and said, you know, she was asking me how, uh, if I was going to participate, there was something going on that weekend at the college. I don't remember. Would I be doing that? And I said, no, I have to go home. And she says, why? You were just home. And I said, well, and I told her, I said, I have to go home for my father's funeral. He just passed away. She didn't believe me. You could see by the look on her face, she came up, she saw me and my other friends sitting there laughing and having a good time. Because of our laughter, it was hard for her to believe, and it took several minutes of convincing for myself and my friend so that she knew that it was true. So I think we need to be careful. That's just an example. Now, Ecclesiastes 3 4 says that there is indeed a time for everything a time to weep and a time to laugh, but a time for everything that is rightly dividing the word of truth. When is the time for laughter? Is it when you're trying to present someone's eternal destiny to them. I mean, is it funny to think about Matthew 10, 28, when Jesus says, Fear him, that after he has killed the body, he can also kill the soul in hell with fire. Fear him. Is that funny? Is Jesus going to the cross for our sins? Is that funny? Just listen to this from Isaiah 53, 3. This is part of the prophecy about Jesus coming. To be the atonement for our sins. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. I'm not sure how much you ever think about what Jesus actually did for our sins. It was our sins, it was to save us from the wrath of God, which we deserved and which everyone deserves. But I am concerned when humor takes such a priority over everything else. Listen to this also from Scripture. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things the wrath of God come, cometh upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. This is from Ephesians chapter 5 verses 3 through 7. So it's saying that when we do these things, we may be partakers of the wrath of God because of them. We are supposed to be separated from this old kind of old kind of life. Further on in Ephesians 5.16, and also echoed again in Colossians 
We are to redeem the time because the days are evil. And so when we get engaged in jokes and laughing about how much time could have been taken saying something that is important, something that will last. And this is what concerns me and why I have turned from what was once a much more openly humorous person to one who is much more serious. When I am with friends or I'm with believers or those that have already heard the message, I'm a little more relaxed to have humor. But even so, if, if that friend is still someone who has not made it right with Jesus, I am uh, usually not very funny. It goes without saying that the Bible really isn't a very funny book. There has been some debate, and there always will be a debate, oh, what are the humorous parts of the Bible? Well, I think that might vary from person to person. Honestly, I don't think anything in the Scripture was meant to get us uh, rolling with laughter. It was meant to seriously consider there was a point to it. But we might find things of humor. I mean, see, we sometimes we may smile and laugh when Elijah is, is mocking the, the prophets of Baal. But they were in a serious state. They were cutting themselves. And they were destined for hell just a short time later. Where we see it, I believe it's in Acts 18, where Paul is in Corinth, and uh, Sosthenes of the synagogue brings him before Galileo. He's bringing him up on these charges that, that are really no charges. But Galileo takes Sosthenes and beats him. And he drives him from the judgment throne. <laughs> he knew that Galileo was trying to, to pull a fast one from his own prejudice. So those things kind of make me smile. We know that God will come to the defense of his own openly sometimes. Sometimes it's not so much as with the case of Stephen in Acts chapter 7. And so we know that the Bible really isn't a very funny book. Just listen to this from James chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. I have seen many, one of the other uh, many that have uh, defame the Lord by their what they have done on stage or on the platform of the church. And what they do only too often, unfortunately, is they actually add to or diminish from the Word of God. I'm not sure if you're aware, but in Deuteronomy 4.2, in Proverbs 30, verses 5 and 6, and in Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19, we are warned not to add to or diminish from the Word of God. As I had seen these, I saw one supposed Christian comedian. This was long ago. No names will be named. I will avoid gossip. But he was mocking those. He was mocking the religious who, who say, Repent and turn from your sins. I remember him saying, Repent! Like these religious nuts who are pushing it down your throat. But John the Baptist and Jesus entered their ministry saying, Repent! What was he doing? Was he really Jesus' servant? Did he love him at all? I cannot tell of his eternal destiny. I'm not sure if he still lives or not. But not as long ago I saw someone else who was using Luke, 8, Luke 19, I'm sorry, the story of Zacchaeus. He had it all made up. He was parading back and forth, acting like he said Zacchaeus acted when it's nowhere to be found in Scripture. And I'm sure it's nowhere to be found in any historical account of Zacchaeus. He added to the word of God to provide entertainment. He was quite a showman. He really was. And there were people that liked that. But how serious could their commitment be to the Lord when this is the way they have been taught to see it? And I say again, it's not only just humor. Sometimes it's just about feeling good. Many times the, the pastors and the leaders think that their mission on Sunday morning is to make the people feel good, rather than to challenge them, rather than to instruct them. How is it when they, when they leave the church? Will they be thinking about what was taught? Or will they just be saying, boy, we had a good time today? There was a church that we shared in for quite a while. We were allowed to speak, my wife and I, to share little things. We finally had to leave because these things essentially meant nothing to them. 
One of the things that always bothered me, it wasn't just myself or her, there were others that would get up and share. It was kind of that thing. Maybe four or five people would get up and share different things for the service. And so I would try to share something serious, something to think about, something to pray about, something that hopefully would change things in their lives. But what happens later? They finish this service. They're jumping around, singing, dancing, clapping. And then they have all kinds of business meetings. They count the offering. They tell who gave what. How is that biblical? Didn't you ever read to, to do your alms in secret? But by the time the service was done, they'd have no memory of the serious message that was brought. The focus was on feeling good. That's why they came to church. Brethren, that is not what church is for. It really isn't. I mean, it's not to be miserable. We should have a lot of joy from fellowship with brethren, but we're there to learn. Worship, yes, but we can worship and should worship all week long. So please, I implore you, try to get a hold of your humor. Try not to let it go too far to where the person you're witnessing to loses the message of the cross, which they need so desperately. God bless.